In 1995, scientists identified a reaction known as anomics. In its biological process, nitrite and ammonium ion are converted into water and nitrogen, which is responsible for 30 to 15 of the nitrogen gas produced in the ocean. So the anomics is the abbreviation of anaerobic ammonium oxidation. This process takes place in the anomics bacteria. This species possesses an anomoxism, a lipid bilayer membrane in which an anomics process takes place. The anomoxism membranes are rich in ladder and lipids which have a unique structure. But what is the role of ladder in the anomoxism? The anomics reaction generates highly toxic intermediate, such as hydrazin and hydroxylamine. Hydrazin is not only a toxic compound, but also stores extreme amount of energy. So it's not surprising that it finds use in rocket fuel. The diffusion of hydrazin across membranes represents a significant energy loss for the cells. The ladder and lipids appear to be an adaptation to this problem posed by anomics metabolism. Anomoxism membranes possess an exceptionally low permeability towards small molecules, so the existence of ladder and lipids restricts the diffusion of hydrazin from the cell. Furthermore, molecular modeling suggests that membranes composed of ladder and lipids are unusually dense compared with conventional lipid membranes. n ladderane is a structural motif consisting of insect rebuilding ring fused in a linear fashion. Stereochemistry of these unpresented structures also is important. For instance, free ladderane could exist as seen or anti-isomers. Pentacycloanamoxic acid methyl ester is one of the ladderane structures that predominantly is located in the anamoxism membrane. Considering unusual biological role and unpresented ladderane structure, Vincent Meshidi and E.J. Curie represented two different total syntheses of this fascinating molecule. In 2004, the first synthesis of pentacycloanamoxic acid methyl ester represented in which the target was produced as a racemate. After two years, in 2006, second generation synthesis was represented in which the target molecule was obtained in optically active material with significantly improved efficiency. Now let's analyze the first synthesis approach. First off, look at the retrosynthetic analysis. It begins with disconnection of acyclic tail of the molecule, suggesting this aldehyde which can be envisioned as the product of ring contraction of cyclopentanone. These two cyclobutene rings can be achieved by expulsion of nitrogen gas from another species. Successful execution of this step is challenging due to side reactions such as fragmentation of cyclobutene rings and polymerization. But the most important challenge is the correct installation of these two cyclobutene rings. As you see, cyclohexane ring in azo compound has not suitable orientation in comparison with the target molecule. So it should undergo a ring flip during the reaction in order to deliver the all entire geometry of sub-target structure. This azo compound is readily accessible through a 2 plus 2 photocycloaddition of the corresponding cyclopentanone and tricycle compound which was traced back to this dibromide compound. Notice that we start the synthesis with these two key fragments which are achiral due to having the plane of symmetry, so the final target will be racemate. Now let's analyze the 4 watt synthesis. Cyclooctatetrine was chosen as a starting material. This compound is not planar. If it is planar, based on Huckel rule, 8 pi electrons form an entire aromatic system which unstabilizes the molecule. In order to get rid of this unstabilizing effect, a distortion occurs in the molecule, so it exists in the non-planar form. Bromination of cyclooctatetrine with bromine gives this intermediate in which the orbital overlap of the tri n moiety becomes energetically favorable, and the enhanced overlap triggers the subsequent thermal electrocyclization, which produces this intermediate. This compound consists of a di n moiety, which is fused to the cyclobutene ring, so form a rigid system which is appropriate for cycloaddition reactions. Adding dibenzyl as a dicarboxylate tricks a heterodilzoller cycloaddition which provide tricyclic compound. Notice that there are two options for approaching of digenophile through digen moiety. The orientation of dibromide is consistent with an approach of the digenophile from the convex face of the bicyclic diene. The next step is hydrogenation of this double bond, but it's easier said than done. In this step, we face with chemical selectivity. In other words, there are functionalities which potentially can undergo hydrogenation. Namely, two bromide substituents, a weak nitrogen nitrogen bond, and two CBZ protecting groups. The others use sodium nitride to get around this problem and increase chemoselectivity. 
Sodium nitrite contaminate the surface of platinum dioxide and modulate the reactivity of high purity of it, which leads to higher selectivity. Reductive debromination of this compound, mediated by Z and powder, in hot acetic acid complete the synthesis of cyclobutene system. In the next step, cyclobutene system and cyclopentanone were joined through a photoinduced 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to deliver pentacyclic duct. Then nitrogen is deprotected by a controlled hydrogenolysis to avoid rupture of the weak nitrogen nitrogen bond. The hydrogen intermediate directly oxidizes in the same reaction mixture with oxygen gas to provide the AZA compound. The authors pointed out under both thermal and photochemical conditions, all atoms at azo decomposition fail to yield the sub-target laddering system. However, a solution to the problem was found after the ketone was exposed to methyl orthoformate in the presence of a catalytic amount of tosylic acid, giving dimethyl ketol. Now this stage is set for the projected key step, which is expulsion of nitrogen. In one possible mechanistic pathway for this transformation, Diazo decomposition and expulsion of nitrogen might generate a diradical species which can undergo ring flip to afford the right orientation of cyclobutene rings. After radical combinations, acidic cleavage of the ketal delivers the desired pentacyclic ketone. According to the target molecule, the pentacyclic ketone should be converted into a four-membered ring. So a wolf rearrangement was planned in order to induce the ring contraction of pentacyclic ketone. The requisite alpha diazo ketone was prepared through two steps sequence. Firstly, sodium methoxide mediates clays and condensation with ethyl formate to provide enol. Exposure of enol to tosylazide and triethylamine prompts the 3 plus 2 cycloaddition, which delivers alpha diazo ketone. The irradiation of methanolic solution of alpha diazo ketone provides 5 laddering. In its ring contracting process, photolysis of the diazo functionality reveals carbon, a highly reactive species that undergoes a Wolf rearrangement to generate ketene, which is trapped with methanol to produce enolate. Then, protonation under the reaction condition delivers a 3 to 1 mixture of diastromers, which endoisomers is kinetically favorable. Although endoisomer is not consistent with the target laddering structure, the mixture of endo and exoisomers carried forward to the next step, in which ester moiety is reduced by diisobutyl aluminium hydride, followed by swern oxidation, provided the corresponding aldehydes. Since the exoisomer is a thermodynamic product, exposure of this mixture of epimeric aldehydes to triethylamine as a solvent for six days deliver the desired exodiastromer. In the next step, linear tail of the target attached to the molecule will by Wittig reaction between aldehyde and corresponding phosphonium salt, which undergoes double deprotonation. After that, double bond was reduced by in situ diamide formation, and in the final step, diazomethane promoted conversion of carboxylic acid to the desired target.